Well, come and tell me about it. I haven't you? got time now. Yes, oh, certainly. Fine. Well, look. <clears throat> this represents a centrifugal type compressor, like an enlarged supercharger. I use this to pull in air at the front and to compress it into combustion chambers, like this, where the injection and burning of fuel heats and expands the air and gives it enough energy to drive a turbine, which drives the compressor, after which the air still has enough energy to give a high velocity propelling jet. Have you ever patented anything? No, I don't know a thing about it. Does a patent both publish and protect? That is the whole point of patent. But one thing's essential. File a patent application before touting the thing round. Otherwise, you haven't a hope. I'll tell you what, let's rough out a specification now. Well, what? Fine, what do we do? Well, you make a rather better sketch, and I'll get on with the clever bit, the writing. OK. In the county of Leicestershire stands the town of Lutterworth. Here, John Wycliffe was born. From here, Thomas Cook organized his first tour. And here, too, in a disused foundry, a little company set out to bring the idea of the jet to roaring life. Here, Whittle and his associates started up the age of the gas turbine, and in so doing, embarked on the inventor's long road of discouragement and danger. the idea about aero engines. Some Air Force chap, Whittle, I think his name is, or something like that. Yes, something about using gas, 500 or 600 degrees temperature. Nothing could take a temperature like that. Why, the whole thing would explode in his face. Time and time again, they saw the instant of success dissolve once more into weary hours of failure. I'm sorry to say we've had another blade failure. They were almost there. And in the final months of World War II, the idea was not only aloft, but on active service. And as the British meteors tore into the flying bombs, jet met jet in combat. 